A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Going to a doctor can be a vulnerable time. We want the best care and diagnosis we can get. But what happens when unconscious gender bias affects the way patients receive treatment? Dr. Sarah Hillman is a clinician and academic researcher at Warwick Medical School at University of Warwick. Today, Sarah talks about medical feminism and why she believes it is essential that doctors and researchers address how gender affects their field in order to provide better and equal medical care to all patients. I hear from a colleague that she recently attended a very prestigious medical awards ceremony. As this professor stood to receive their award, a ripple of whispers went out around the room. I didn't realize Professor so-and-so was a woman, did you? And it really annoyed my colleagues that we're still surprised when the exceptional is achieved by women. But what really upset me when I heard this story The thing that really grated was that I thought this professor was a man. The person stood before you telling you about unconscious gender bias has it. And if it exists in me, it's really likely it exists in you as well. It doesn't matter how many times you do the e-learning module (laughs) whilst eating a sandwich and checking your emails. I know you're doing it. We all do it. But the point is this, the e-learning module is not going to help you here. Instead, we have to call ourselves out on the occasions where our unconscious becomes conscious. Acknowledge it as more than just a passing thought. Only then can we start to rewire our minds. So I started to think about unconscious bias. If it was affecting the way I considered my colleagues, could it be affecting other things? For instance, could it be affecting the care I give my patients? Now, it's really hard for professions like medicine that are so grounded in belief of their own objectivity to recognize that they have biases. But medicine's not impenetrable. To fully understand why, we have to go right back to the beginning. Since the days of Hippocrates, The physicians, scientists, philosophers were all men. That meant that the male body became the default. The female body became the other. So what difference does using men as the default make? Well, as a GP registrar, I'm quite often struck by how many people tell me they're having adverse drug reactions. But I was particularly surprised how many women were telling me they were having reactions to drugs. So I looked a bit further. Historically, much of the research around drugs has been done on proportionally more male cells, male animal models, and relatively more male participants. We then go on to administer drugs in gender-neutral doses, despite the obvious size, fat muscle, hormone ratio differences, and we wonder why women present with more adverse drug reactions. And here's the sting in the tail. Not only are we prescribing drugs that are in the wrong dose, or may not even work, but we may have dismissed a far earlier development stage, drugs that didn't work for men, but may have actually worked for women. Are we, in fact, incorrectly prescribing for all women? And if it affects drugs, does it go further? Does it affect diagnosis? Men and women both present with an array of symptoms when having heart attacks. The most common, of course, is chest pain. But women present with relatively more associated symptoms, palpitations, nausea, that sort of thing. And the presence of those associated symptoms may cloud a clinician's judgment. You might not get to the diagnosis. But if we get over the first hurdle and suspect the diagnosis, we need to think about the tests we use to confirm the diagnosis. Currently, we use a blood test. And that blood test looks at the relative amount of an enzyme released from heart muscle when it's damaged. Up until relatively recently, we weren't aware that the cutoff, the threshold we were using, was set too high, and we were missing women's heart attacks. These biases are leading to misdiagnosis. 
So I'm sat in my GP practice, potentially prescribing the wrong medication, missing diagnoses, and providing suboptimal care to women because of the way society has and still continues to influence the way that we consider medical, men and women, and not because of objective biological truths. We can either carry on, or we can rethink it, reimagine it, rewrite it. Let's be brave. Let's change this argument. This is not men versus women. This is our past versus our future. Let's stop. Let's listen to women and question what we thought we knew. This doesn't have to be the other anymore. And I, for one, am so ready for that change. And I would love it if you would join me. We can all be medical feminists. We just need to be brave enough. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in London, England. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx NHS. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow. <laughs>